Welcome, one more day to En Armonia, a space to know ourselves deeply and precisely. This is a bilingual channel where I publish videos in English and Spanish, as you know. And as I said, I respond to what people demand. So today I'm going to present a very precise way of knowing our shadows, but also our lights. And you will not find this science in many places. This is something I discovered studying the science of harmonia, also the Sephirotic tree, the tree of life. And you will see an amazing connection between the Sephirots and the nine primary energies which are present all over the universe. But we have to discover their relation, their qualities, their functions. And this will shed light on our shadows. As we saw, our old Adamic spirit, soul and body are fallen. They are caught up. And we have to discover a more profound and whole way of tapping into the infinite energy of life, healing, love without conditionings. Therefore, we have to access the primary core of our being by inner harmonization. We are not just bringing together different elements. No, we are discovering the true unity of being in our center. And for that we need the key of knowledge. This was the expression used by the master, Ishu, Yeshua. He said, Woe to you, Pharisees, doctors of the law, because you keep away the key of knowledge, but neither enter nor allow others to enter. So what is that key of knowledge? Well, the Pharisees knew the written Torah. They studied the five main books of the Bible, but they didn't understand it, even though they knew certain principles which mirror the tree of life. But the true Torah is the way of life. It's not written anywhere. It's written in our hearts, but not with human letters, not with human rules, methods or techniques. Yet there is one true method, the method, which is following the true way. Method comes from the Greek meta odos, to follow the way. And the master said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Therefore, we need to follow the harmonious way of energy, discovering the true connections, the true qualities of our being. Otherwise, what manifests is destruction, shadow. Darkness doesn't exist in itself, it's the absence of light. And there is only one divine movement, energy, vibration. But when this vibration breaks up, it brings destruction. This is even in the written Torah. I, yud heh bab -he, the divine vibration, form light and create calamity. And this is not to be understood as one entity somewhere in the heights punishing those who don't fulfill his commandments. This is religious superstition. There is no such God as the Jehovah or Yahweh, Yahweh, that we find in religion. That's a vibration of coherence or incoherence. It depends. The yud heh bab -Hey is the active, receptive, reconciling and manifesting principle. Those are the four aspects which are present in everything. You can find the divine vibration all over the universe, but sometimes it gets in incoherence and therefore hate, division, tension, distress manifest. 
So we need to find the way of coherence, the way of unity, which is always pulsating in our true core, in serenity. And for that, as I said, we need the method. It is true, some teachers have said that the truth goes beyond techniques, rules, methods. And in a certain way, it's true. Because we are not following human techniques. We are not following additional rules as those used by the Pharisees. They invented the so-called Takanot, which are external rules, regulations, in order to fulfill the way, the Torah. But that was useless because nothing external can lead us to the truth. We need to find the true way by harmonizing mind, heart and body, soul, body and spirit. And for that we need to use our mind, our intellect. This is not just a question of observing mystically everything. If you notice, some teachers claim that we only need pure awareness in order to find liberation. This is the case, for instance, of Jiddu Krishnamurti. He was a very famous educator, a good communicator. And his main theme was the truth is a pathless land. And he promoted the choiceless awareness. An awareness that doesn't judge, doesn't label things, that knows directly. So he said the only thing we need is this action of observing ourselves, feeling ourselves deeply, finding the root of our fears, our conditionings. And this is true. We need a pure awareness, a pure consciousness. But we also need to use the intellect because we need to find out the interrelations. And for that we need a method. He said we don't need methods or rules or techniques. And I guess he was saying it in the sense that we don't need external rules. But we cannot say that we don't need a method. Because method is order, is a structure and life is a structure. Without a structure, there is no life. So we need to find the structure of life, the vibration. And I suggest looking to this harmonic configuration, which I explained in previous videos. You have the information in the box down below. I will also leave a summary of all these principles in the blog the music of wisdom.blogspot.com the song of reality is the title and there you'll find all this in a more synthesized way but let's go a step by step putting all this in relation with our experiences our birth portals our vital paths because even though I spoke about this, I didn't give mm, several keys, something which I explain more in detail in the modules of the course I teach. I call it harmony therapy. And this would be the first class or the foundation of the third module, which is based on knowing the exact relation of all the energies of life using these harmonic principles. Therefore, let's start knowing what we have in front. As you see, the I amness, yo soy in Spanish, is in the center. And as I have said many times, from this I amness emerges the first impulse, which is universal will and finality the finality of donating oneself. In Hebrew, this is known as Ratzon Alejas Pia, the will to give, donate, not the will to receive, which is pure selfishness. So we come with a will 
and a purpose, which is somehow in potential. Therefore, our will must be distributed all through our life with the crown of life, and this is Keter, which I represent with the number zero, which means infinite potential, just like a round seed contains the whole tree or plant within. There is no coincidence in this zero is a very good symbol for this infinite potential. It is not just nothingness, as some people claim. This is not abstract mathematics. This is ontological harmonia, ontology of reality, the science of being. And within the infinite potential, we also have the ability to open a space in order to distribute our gifts. We all come with certain gifts that we have to give out for others. And for this we need that zero energy which implies relaxing tensions in our mind, our heart, flowing without obstruction. We need a space to flow and to give ourselves. Now, we need to know the following nine energies, which is the way we distribute this infinite potential and infinite will. In a sense, we can say that all energies are an expression of the primordial one and the primordial potential. So we are dealing with one always, but in different ways, different functions, relations. Actually, in Greece, in ancient Greece, the word arithmos, which means number, was not an abstract representation. Arithmos in Greek means principle of action, function, relation, quality, energy, that which moves to act, to transform. Therefore, we are dealing with the functions or actions of the Holy One. And if you notice, everything around is based on frequencies, vibrations, relations, and they are expressed by the so-called nine primary numbers. Actually, we can get all the numbers with the first four. One plus two plus three plus four sum up ten. And we can get all the others by summing up those in combination. And you will see how this is very useful. Now we must understand all this in connection with our experience in this world. And our spirit and soul are born into this world, going through a definite birth portal, which is marked by the vibration of the day, the month and the year. You might say this is superstition, but there is science of vibration behind. Because we are within a matrix of 12 months, weeks that have seven days, and all these are cycles, they are rhythms, vibrations, and each vibration is different. So it's not the same the vibration of Monday than the vibration of Tuesday, just as it's not the same the vibration of Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, Si, Do, the seven notes. The second Do is the higher octave, which vibrates twice as much as the first. Therefore, each energy is different, and each step in the cycle is different. So, to be born one day is not the same as being born another day. And the same goes for the month and the year. We are within cycles, therefore we can calculate these cycles. And you will notice it's possible to understand all this in a more simple way, without the need of knowing complex things about astrology, Kabbalah, or even numerology, which is a simplification. With the principles I'm going to present, you will even understand astrology, Kabbalah, magic or 
numerology in a deeper way because you have the science, the foundation, which is harmonia, is the science of vibration. So, take your birth date. You have been born in a definite day, month and year. And to start with the energy zero, let's find out if there is a zero in the day, month and year. If you find a day 10, then you have a zero. If you have been born in October, there you have another zero. And if you have been born in 1930, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 2000, 2010, 2020, there you have the 10 hidden. We are looking for the zero in the decimal. So if you have been born in 2006, you don't have that zero. We, we don't count it. You will understand why this is. Notice, for instance, that the zero indicates infinite potential, but if you don't manifest the infinite potential you have, then you get stagnated. So all those who have been born in these cycles tend to have a great capacity for something. But if they don't unfold themselves, they tend to get stagnated. If you have a day 10 or a day 20, your spirit has a tremendous potential, but there can be turbulences in the spirit if you don't manifest what you have to be. If you have been born in October, then you will have a tendency to get turbulences, stagnation, in the soul, the so-called servant, the mashal in Hebrew, which is associated with the Masarot, the zodiac. There are 12 servants. And the month of October indicates the possibility of a stagnation in self-discovery, knowing the soul, who am I? The spirit has to do with the impulse or the energy of action, and the soul has to do with the feelings, who you feel you are, and who you know you are. Then, if you find that 10 hidden in your month, there can be a delay of self-discovery, especially after your age of transformation. If you sum up all the digits in your birth date, you will get a first cipher of two numbers, and that's your age of transformation. It means that you reach a peak at that age and you have to be attuned to your vital paths. The main vital path is also indicated by that cipher. And if you have the 10th month, then this means you might have difficulties in knowing yourself, your vocation, after your age of transformation, which is actually a marker. After that point, you have to be attuned to your main vital path in order to be completely attuned and not having difficulties in your soul, your body, your spirit. There are also a secondary path after that age, but I will not go into that for the moment. This is something I explain deeper in the modules. And for now, we just need to know the day, month and year, and the main vital path, summing up all the digits. The main vital path coincides with the age of transformation. Now, suppose you have the zero in the year. You have been born in 1980, 1990, or in 2000. This means there can be turbulences stagnation in the material aspect of your life. Finances, health, relationships, house. You might find some obstacles in those domains, but only when you don't manifest your gifts. 
and your gifts are indicated by the two last ciphers of your year. If you have been born in 1980, it means your gift, which is indicated by zero, is connected to the eight. And we will see what eight means. It's an energy of abundance, protection, justice, logistics of distribution. You can be very good in businesses, but maybe you don't know it. So you have to become aware of your strong points and, and your weak points so that you can balance darkness with light. As I said, the day indicates an aspect of the spirit, your impulse, your energy of work. The month is connected to the servant, the mashal. We all have one servant, and this servant must be working for the light, not for darkness. So in this case, when you find that last zero in your year, there might be some stagnation in the material domains if you don't manifest your light, if your servant is serving the evil one, so to say. Therefore, it's very useful to know also the main vital path, which we get by summing up again all the digits of our birth date, and it coincides with the age of transformation. So if you get the number 30, as in my case, your main vital path is 33. The basic energy is 3. If your main vital path is 43, then you have basic energy 7, 4 plus 3, 7. But there are two aspects, 3 and 4. Therefore, we have to know exactly the specificity of the energies. So let's start with the energy 1, which corresponds with the sphere of Chokmah, wisdom. And this sphere has to do with clear vision, faith, and therefore the energy one also has to do with self-assurance, security, clarity of vision, leadership, creativity. Therefore, we must find this energy present in our life. And we can find that in our birth portal because it marks our worldly personality. And we have to illumine our physical personality, our soul, our spirit. You might find the energy one in your day, therefore your spirit is marked by that energy. Your impulse will be to become a leader of your life, your house, your business, but not without self-assurance, self-security, direction, clear goals. In order to be a leader, you need lots of wisdom. You might have the number one in the month, so your soul needs to be attuned to that self-assurance, but without becoming too egocentric, because the soul is very emotional, and the emotions bring egocentrism, making everyone go around ourselves. So the shadow of the number one is self-assurance, but in a negative way, egocentrism, narcissism, or insecurity. Need to control, to become better than others. Therefore, there can be fear to be replaced by someone. You might see adversaries or competence all over. The number one is very often present in the ten, which is usually hidden in the day if you have been born in a day 20 or a day 30. You have that ten hidden, that number one is in a sense present. You can also have it in your main vital path. For instance, in the path 28 or 37, 3 plus 7, 10, or in 46, or in 19. So watch the negative aspects of the one, which are insecurity, 
narcissism, egocentrism, lack of clarity. And to give you a clear example, a person might be going through the path 10, for instance, which is known as the Wheel of Fortune in the 22 Sephirotic paths. And this is because the person tends to feel everything as the result of lack or fortune. He's a very insecure person and might try to find stability or security by consulting tarot readers or cabalists or numerology. But this is a result of their insecurity. They might feel insecurity with a partner in their house, in their job, in their life in general. They think their selling is going to fall down. They have to get up at night several times to see if they have closed the windows, the door. And this is because they are not focused. They are not paying attention. Sometimes they attract a couple that is infidel. And this is because they are not safe within themselves. So they inspire the feeling of insecurity in the partner. So don't be surprised if your partner looks for security in someone else. If you don't feel secure within yourself, you must be confident, focused, very clear about what you are developing and be very honest with yourself. Trust within the relationship is very important. This would be the key of this energy one or energy 10 in general. Now to give you another example. In one occasion I was listening to what a guru did. He was known as Osho Ragnish. He is very famous. And as I was listening to the characteristics of his life, I came up with an intuition. I thought he's probably a number one energy personality. He's going through uh, number one main path. And I sum up all the digits in his birth date, 11th of December of 1931. And I got 19, which sums up 1. 1 plus 9, 10, which is 1. And he was a narcissist. He wanted everyone to be around himself, worshipping him. Actually, he is still worshipped and regarded as a great guru. But he was a pseudo-mystic charlatan. He came up with a sort of pseudo-illumination, pseudo-enlightenment, and he made other beliefs. He was very wise. But his life was very miserable. He had problems with drugs. He had mm, problems of abuse, even though this was hidden somehow. It came up later. Actually, some of the members in his community perform what is regarded as one of the first biological attacks in the US because they poisoned some food in a restaurant or something like that. And the characteristics of a narcissist person is that the person feels insecure, thinks that others are competent, so they try to convince everyone around that they are good, that they are compassionate, that they have a great love. But they become abusive in a certain way because they control, they want to establish a clear hierarchy. And this is very typical in teams of work, business, enterprises, the family. So you can find a narcissist everywhere and it's run by this energy one in negative. Therefore, those who have the energy one in the main path must have the goal of giving security, but working with their own inner security so that they don't have to impose it by force. Now, in order to harmonize this energy one, we need the energy two, which 
tells us about balance, cooperation, intuition of what the other needs. It belongs to the sphere of Bina, the binary understanding. We need to relate with our opposites. Man, woman, active, receptive, giving, receiving. Those are dynamics expressed all over the universe. And this is the energy too. We need to give ourselves to others, to cooperate, to balance, and have a spark of understanding of what the other needs. However, in shadow, the Chu is attachment to others, emotional attachment, is unbalance, is lack of intuition of what the other needs, so isolation. You can have this energy in your month, in your mashal. For instance, I was born in February, so my mashal, my servant, vibrates with the energy too. Therefore, I have a tendency to become emotionally dependent or don't cooperate, don't help. And this is selfishness. Therefore, I have to detach myself from situations, people, but cooperate. I must bring the energy of helping in order to discover who am I. Chu is connected to love, to giving ourselves. You can have the energy Chu in your day. The energy Chu can also be hidden within other numbers. Eight, six, four. So those who have those energies somehow are called to cooperate. But it can also be present in your main vital path. For instance, the 20 path, which sums up 2, or 29, which sums up 11, 2 plus 9, 11, and 1 plus 1, 2, or 38. But in those cases, we have different approaches. The path 20 is the final judgment in the Sephirotic paths. It's a karmic path. It's not easy because the zero can indicate the stagnation, especially when the person does not communicate something. The 20 is a path of telling something that must awake people. The final judgment is represented with the trumpets of awakening. And 20 is a path in which people demand recognition, attention. But if they don't communicate what they have to communicate harmoniously, it's impossible that they receive the attention or recognition they deserve. They must first be in tune with themselves so that they can help, they can cooperate. People listen to us when we have something important to tell or to provide in the world. So in this path 20, the person is called to cooperate widely with the world. Now, those going through the path 29, 11, which sums up two, might feel a huge mental confusion. 29 is the number of the mental labyrinth. And in this case, the basic two energy indicates lack of decision and decisiveness to be in between two chairs. And this is a very destructive energy because the person gets completely stagnated, unable to decide, to follow the heart. Very often because of the opinions of the parents, especially the mother, when she says, well, become a lawyer because that's the source of a good income. Don't study music because musicians are just beggars. Very few become famous or productive. Now this is a mistake because if someone does not follow the true heart, it's impossible that abundance can flow. So uh, we are called to cooperate by following our heart. Not following the heart leads to frustration and therefore to attachment. The shadow of two, remember, is attachment, stagnation, and balance, indecisiveness. Therefore, we need also the energy tree. 
which corresponds with that Leon elevated knowing, the union of wisdom and understanding. And three is an energy of relation, union of two opposites, and therefore generation, because when we unite two poles, opposites, we generate more energy. Is fertility. It's also sensitivity and empathy. Therefore, those with this energy in their main path, whether it is 12, 21 or 30, as it is my case, are called to express something with sensitivity, connecting everything, the mind, the heart, the body, is affectivity on all domains. Therefore, when this energy is not harmonized, it becomes improductivity, infertility, frustration, manic depression, nervousness. There is a huge amount of energy which gets stagnated and makes us sick. And I can feel this because I go through the main path 30, which is the master of improductivity, utter mm, instability, or the genius of communication. Those going through the 30 can be very good actors, musicians, writers, but it's because they flow easily when they trust in their heart and their mind. They have a very good mind. The tree is the mind of the spirit. Six is the mind of the soul. And nine, as we will see, is the mind of matter. So we also tend to get very intellectual when we are not harmonized. Those with an energy tree, whether it is in the month or the main path, can become too intellectual. We can do many courses and read many books, and take many notes, and never apply anything that we learn. We keep everything in the head. And this is a mistake, because knowledge is necessary. We need to establish connections in the mind, but always in connection with the world. Connectivity. We need to feel everything integrally. We cannot just live in the spiritual clouds. We have to come down to the earth. Therefore, we also need the energy four. The four is a stability, is the four pillars of matter, earth, water, air and fire, is providence, is mercy. This is why the four is connected to mercy. And this brings certain forgiveness, certain cooperation, 2 multiplied by 2 is 4, and it brings certain forgiveness. It brings us down to the earth, where we find stability. And this is very good for the trees, because we tend to get very nervous or pessimistic when we don't feel the groundness of life. And this is fundamental for those who traverse a main path 22, 13, or 31, but the energies are different. 22 is maximum providence, is a master path, the master builder, the master of providing maximum love, support, materiality, solidity, groundness. But if you traverse the path 13, you are called to provide a certain transcendence, leaving behind old beliefs and transforming your negativity. Notice how it has the three and the one. The unit gives you the specificity of the cipher. And in this case, the one is the general energy. And we get the reverse in 31. The 31 path is about finding unity, self-confidence, divine connection within, in order to become fertile and productive, to guide the world divinely. Different approaches, but same basic energy.
which in this case is 4. And as I said, this is about providence, stability, maximum cooperation, forgiveness, mercy. Otherwise, it's a very unstable, it's a very unstructured path. Those travelers in the path 40, for instance, have rational limitation, difficulty in cooperate, in helping, in understand. But this is because they have a tremendous potential. They can be people who become incredible therapists. They are able to accompany others who are suffering. They have a huge heart, so they can stand the pain within and help others to stand and transform the pain in themselves. So if you have a 40, pay close attention. Don't forget this. You will have trouble if you don't become what you have to become, which is a true provider of huge compassion, accompany others, support others. You have a tremendous potential. Now, in order to accomplish all this, we need discipline, force. And this is the sphere of Geburah, force, which corresponds with the energy five. And five is about finding freedom and principles of living through certain discipline, leading the energies through the harmonious paths of lesser resistance. This means that we have to learn the connections of true living in harmonia. Ethical principles are connected to the five and this is a very good energy for guiding, teaching, or even traveling with freedom. Those with basic energy five tend to be people that love to travel, freedom, but sometimes they understand freedom in a, in a very inharmonious way. They mistake freedom with licentiousness, lack of restriction. So they become attached to the pleasures of life, traveling without restriction, without goals, without ethical principles. They are not honest with themselves and they don't find the vocation, which is actually an aspect of the number 10, to find security. Two multiplied by five is 10. Therefore, they need the energy one to be the leaders of their life with principles. Those who have the five in the month, the energy of Taurus, can become very good teachers, leaders, stable, because they contain the energy two and three. Two plus three, five. So notice how you can understand each energy with the others, because one is everything and every energy is containing every other energy. So those traversing the path 14, which is temperance in the Sephirotic tree, or a path 23 or 32 or 41, those are run by this energy five, but with different nuances. 14 is a path of spiritual discipline, of leading others through detachment, through allowing energies to be transformed. It contains seven, two multiplied by seven is 14. It demands huge attention. And we will see what this energy seven means, but the, the following day, because I don't want to make the video too long. Tell me in the comments if this was useful to you. In the following day, we will continue with the six, the energy of harmonization in Tiferet, the beauty, proportion, harmonia, uniting the triad of the spirit and the triad of the matter. And we will end with the energy nine, everything very interesting. And as I said, I will leave the summary of these principles in the blog, themusicofwisdom.blogspot.com. There you'll find the light, shadow and purpose aspects of each energy. And for now, thank you very much for listening with attention. Leave your questions and comments and 
let's keep opening that space to manifest the infinite potential of primordial love and modified life, integral conscience and deep blissful serenity.